Welcome to Push to Pass Podcast with J.P. Murray, a discussion about business, racing, sports, and life. This podcast delivers insights on what makes businesses, teams, and people successful based on real-life business experiences. Following a career with America's largest associations, J.P. Murray founded the Murray Company, one of Washington, D.C.'s most successful consulting firms. The company was acquired successfully and enabled him to launch J.P. Murray Racing, a business development and sponsorship agency for auto racing teams. Here is J.P. Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Push to Pass podcast with J.P. Murray. I am thrilled about the topic today. It's about a common term you're going to hear in motorsports funding circles. It's business to business marketing, business to business funding. And what the heck does that mean? Well, we're pleased today to have with us really the guru of B2B funding in motorsports. His name is George Giles. He's the director of motorsports with Ring Squared. We're going to solve the mystery of B2B today. So you'll know about it for your own company, for your race team, and if you're a driver, the options that you might have available. George, welcome. What is B2B funding for motorsports? Many times I've known you've heard this forever. Every time you talk to somebody, we would love to back you. We would love to work with you, but we don't have any marketing money. So If they don't have any money, you kind of play on that. Say, okay, fine. Let's look at leveraging of doing B2B deals with your vendors, maybe even customers. That's that's always the process. But if there's a company that wants to back you and they make something, they build something, they have a service, let's look at your vendor list. And you see a company that you know that service, there's four or five people that they can buy the exact same product, same service, and same price. So you go out to all your different vendors for that product or service and find out who will help market your company in the marketplace. And we'll use racing as an example and where that would increase your sales, increase your sales to them. And at that time, the company that's wanting to back you is not paying any money. Their vendors doing that. I know you've got thousands of thousands. these that you've done. Is there an example that would like resonate with the audience to understand it? Mm-hmm. I worked with the driver a few years back. He was at the second level of Road to Indy. And the gentleman had a business where they spent about $100 million on a certain category. And they actually had four vendors they could go to for the exact same price, exact same product, exact same service. But they went to all four distributors and they said, all four distributors come back and said, yes, we'll co-op with you. We want your business. The three that didn't have it and the one that says we want to keep, the other says, we would like your business. Let's talk. And so they had discussions with all four vendors. They decided to stick with their current vendor because of a percentage of that 50 million of revenue going back to market both companies. And so they stayed with their current vendor. And then as that company grew, the amount grew to the racing program. It actually covered the driver's Indy Lights program and part of his IndyCar program. So most of these deals, George, that are put together, is it usually a percentage of the total relationship you have with that vendor that is then used to fund the race team or is a certain dollar amount? It's based on sales. It's based on sales. You see this at a local level for advertising companies, for product, for banner ads. They give out co-op money to promote their product in a local area to bring them into a retailer. You see this a lot through just everyday business advertising. I used to be, I used to sell a lot of advertising. I used to have an ad agency back when I lived in Indianapolis area. And we had a service that said, okay, this company right here is providing for the Indianapolis area co-op money for these types of retailers that are carry our product. All they have to do is put our name in the banner ad and for the ads for internet advertising. And we will reimburse them 100% of the cost, which is wonderful. The way you explain this vendor-buyer relationship and having a percentage of the sale go to fund whatever it might be, it doesn't necessarily have to be involved in racing or the businesses don't really need to be in racing. 
to benefit from that. And I think that may be one of the things that our listeners may value is that, hey, you can put together a program like this. The vendor that you cut the deal with may or may not want their logo on the car or to activate hospitality. Correct. And that's true. I've had many instances that they would just say, hey, George, let's work out the best deal financial for us. We don't need to be on the race car. You do whatever you want to do with that. Because they just want the customer. They want the customer. And we can break it down to go even further to tie in that company and make it more advantageous for us to do it. But so far, everyone I've done like that, they go, wow, what do we have to do here to keep your business? Because to replace that $100 million a year client, it was going to cost them a lot more money than their co-op cost to do that. And then also, they, if it's a distributor, especially for food, they can go back to the manufacturer and the manufacturer will go, here you go. You've been around the, the grid at different race series for a number of years. What would you expect or could you guess at what the percentage mm. of cars are working B2B to deals compared to straight sponsorship? Probably a good 30, 40%, maybe even higher. And you'll see in the IndyCar level now, we, I'll just use the master of co-op, Roger Penske. Imagine how much Penn's oil spends with his trucking company. One of the things that I'm very excited about and what you're doing currently with Ring mm-hmm. Squared, if you're not Roger Penske, you're on the NASCAR ladder series, let's say. Mm-hmm. You've got a program that can fit for grassroots driver. Tell me how the Ring Squared program works. Well, Ring Squared is, is a telecom, telecom company. We are, it's a full service nationwide turnkey deal. We offer 800 numbers, internet services, equipment. We work with call centers with Dow 800, one of their bigger brands. About 40, 50% of all 800 numbers you see on direct response advertising on television is owned by Ring Square. We do a lot of work right through our brand, Dow 800. But from a local guy, if you have a company locally that has people sitting at a desk with a phone in front of them and they're on the phone all day working, it's an insurance company, it's a financial institution, It's somebody scheduling something for home repair. That's a potential client. Kevin Alward, who owns Ring Squared, used to run a company called Total Tail years ago. And we did did this with long distance. Everybody at that time at one point had long distance. So we're able to a lot of times go into a company, even then and now. They're already doing this business. We're not recreating the wheel or anything. So if they just switch their current vendor over to Ring Squared, they have money back into the race program. That company supports that driver without spending any money. And then you also, they might be able to have savings as well over and above that. And, and so there's a lot of advantages. We don't want the, first of all, we don't want the driver to learn to be a telecom salesperson. Let Ring Squared salespeople come in. We do the sale. We won't get every sale, of course, but we try to do that and try to be able to fund drivers without normal people who would ever be involved in motorsports. They're doing it because they like that driver or that driver's great. And if the driver wants to slap that company's name on it for 200 bucks a month, fine. We used to have an average driver just get about three or $4,000 a month 25 years ago for long distance. And this is a lot more. You know, if you're sitting there as a driver and you have a young driver coming up and have to work a regular job and try to try to fund money on the other side and do some coaching, they don't have time to do a lot of this stuff. If we get four or five companies that have worked with them or tight with that group, next thing you know, they have enough money where they can quit their regular job and it gives them a good base. And then you teach that driver, if they've done, say, four or five of these and they work with us on it, I can sit there and go, okay, who else do you have? Let's work on other programs, Let's see if we can get it bigger and how we can grow that as they come up in their professional racing, they'll be able to build and build and build. And there might be some deals that we can work with some of the companies that are tied to Link Square, And then that might do something else you know, basically the same thing with another type service or product, as I mentioned at the beginning. That's the pickup that I really mm-hmm. took from what you were describing mm-hmm. here. If we have the opportunity to get drivers to Ring Squared and to collaborate with you, you're going to learn how business to business funding works. And you might be able to apply it to things that are not related to telecom. It could be Correct. for 
uniforms and cleaning services. Mm -hmm. It could be for oil and lubrications, whatever it can be. Anything that your business or the people that want to support you, anything that their business is utilizing and buying, there's probably a B2B play there, right? That is absolutely correct. And what the best part is, is a great way for companies to get involved in racing and not have to pay anything. And then you can show them, bring them on the racetrack, show them the benefits of being in racing. If it's a consumer product, you know, you go to the Chili Bowl, or you go to, you know, a Trans Am race, there's people around, those are potential clients. So if I'm a race team, I'm a race driver, how do I look at the Ring Squared program, maybe to do a little bit of due diligence and get information? How should that work? You can go to ringsquared.com. We have a motorsports page that you can go to and see what our involvement's in. You can call me direct. I have a call for number at 877-772-2464. I'm on LinkedIn. My last name is spelled G-I-L-E-S. I'm George, and you'll see with that, and you'll see my background and what I've been doing for the last year. I'd love to talk to a lot of different drivers and see if we can help fund your race program. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this was valuable to you. I tell you, this is the way that motorsports funding is going to go. It's happening now. It's going to be the way of the future. And for those of you that are getting started, the quicker you can get into this game, the better. On behalf of my friend, George Giles, With Ring Squared, I'm J.P. Murray. Can't wait to see you next time on the Push to Pass podcast. So long, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Push to Pass podcast with J.P. Murray, a discussion about business, racing, sports, and life. If you would like to sponsor Push to Pass, send an email to jp at jpmurray.com. Follow J.P. on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. His website is jpmurray.com. Until next time, push yourself to pass the competition. Thanks for listening.